trials. Ah, after almost four years of training vids, we finally get around to a video about braking. Good braking technique goes a long way to improving your riding. Too many guys are good at the throttle, but hopeless under brakes. We will lock wheels up or not brake hard enough. We brake too early or too late, or have the incorrect mix of front and rear brake. Our Zen Master Sensei says it all. Grasshopper, you can only go as fast as you can stop. Leaving skid marks on track often lead to skid marks in underpants too. First bike setup. Regular viewers will know about the default riding position. So set your levers up accordingly. You want your front brake lever horizontal to the bars or only moved down slightly. You want your rear brake lever horizontal with the foot peg or even a bit higher so the brake is applied when the lever is level with the foot pegs. Always have one finger on the clutch and front brake levers. Always cover the rear brake for wheelies and descents. And now it's over to Tasmanian dirt bike coach, Jesse Daly. So all motorbikes have three brakes. Front brake is around 70%, back brake around 25, and depending on two stroke or four stroke, 5% engine brake. We want to learn to use all three brakes together so that maxes our braking capacity. Jesse's right, most of the time your front brake does at least 75% of the work. Most of us favour the rear brake too much because it's way less scary locking up the rear wheel than the front wheel. But your best braking is when the wheels are just short of locking up. So find a smooth, consistent surface and practice braking hard enough to just start locking the front wheel up, just like ABS braking. As you become more comfortable, try actually locking up the front wheel briefly and maintaining your balance. This can be very useful for when you hit loose terrain and the front wheel locks up accidentally you are less likely to piss your pants. Then work at getting both front and rear wheels on the point of locking up, riding over loose terrain and grippy terrain. You can see here Jesse is riding over loose stuff and very grippy grass. He continually changes the front and rear brake pressure to stay at maximum braking without locking up by the wheel. You can hear that rear brake chattering away. Good braking exercise is engine off, so you can just hear both your front and rear wheels slipping. Just. That'll give you maximum traction and develop your confidence in going down steep hills. Brake with the bike upright then corner. The moment the bike is tilted over, there's a very high chance of the front wheel washing out under brakes. So ideally, you do all your braking before entering a corner. An exception to this rule is a sweeping entrance to a corner, where you will transfer from the front brake to the rear to avoid that front end washing out. Most of us lock the rear wheel up way too much. Yes, sometimes this is useful. Most of the time it's sloppy riding that might feel good but just slows us down. Find a steep long descent and only use your rear brake. Try to avoid locking the wheel up but just have it on the point of skidding. With practice, this also means you won't need to pull the clutch in to avoid stalling under brakes. Pulling your clutch in when braking or doing downhill runs is usually a sign of poor rear brake control. Leaving the clutch out also means making the most of engine braking. 
Four strokes have a distinct advantage here, especially the bigger engines, but even two strokes provide just enough engine braking to smooth things out a little. What about skidding the rear wheel into corners? Yes, this is a valid technique for very sharp corners, but many of us try to do this on faster corners, and you think it will make you faster, <laughs> but it will just slow you down. Believe me, we've tried and compared a lot. Look, at the very top level, it can make a difference, as top riders often steer with the rear wheel. But hey, if you aren't a top rider, you wouldn't be watching these vids otherwise. Also, it can pay to lock the rear wheel up on slow, steep, sandy or gravel descents. The rear wheel digs in and can slow you down. But otherwise, make like a human ABS, stop locking that rear wheel up. Okay, the advanced stuff. Do you want to seriously get faster and can afford new brake discs regularly? Tasmanian coach Jesse Daly explains body positioning when really hauling ass. So your braking technique begins with your attack position, which consists of gripping the bike with the knees on the balls of your feet, head above the crossbar and elbows bent looking forward. And all we do is transition our weight back. Still gripping with the knees on the balls of our feet, eyes up. All we do is go from central to the rear of the bike. Brake as late as possible. When intermediate riders hit the throttle hard, they almost always hit the brakes too early and lose any advantage. Top riders learn to brake late and maximise their overall speed. Choose a small enduro loop and mark out where you are applying the brakes. Then get a friend to time you around the loop. Once you've got a baseline time, start to move your markers in a bit closer to the corner and start braking later. Stop moving them in when you can't avoid overshooting the corner. When you have reached the minimum braking distance possible for each corner, compare your lap time with when you started. You should be pleasantly surprised. However, for us everyday riders, you will normally be faster by simply not revving the bike as much and focus on carrying your speed into corners. See our video about throttle control and gear selection for more about this approach. And what about brake bling? We did a review on the Clake 2 a few years back, a very intriguing combination of easy clutch and hand-operated rear brake. Very funky, very useful, very expensive. And one for the cheap asses. I've just started messing around with a cheap left-hand rear brake setup, the Ox brake. Nowhere near as powerful or sensitive as the Clake, but early tests suggest it could be useful in some situations. We'll review this after extensive testing. Midwest do a very nice front brake lever that encourages the use of one finger only. It doesn't change the front brake characteristics at all, it just has nice ergos. And finally, possibly the cheapest bling you can get is just get yourself a louder horn. 